Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Just a quick message from me just before we go into our interview with Scotland and Manchester City prospect Louis Fiorini. We'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button before you watch this video for all our exclusive content coming out over the weeks and months. We'll have plenty more action coming on the way this week. Hopefully Monday night if Scotland get to play the Czech Republic, we'll have instant reaction from that, just like we did from the Scotland-Israel game, which is now available to view on our channel. We'll have a couple of exclusives coming this week, which we'll be able to see very shortly. First of them being Mark Milligan, the former Hibs and Australia captain, talking to us about his time in Edinburgh and his new challenge in the A-League with MacArthur FC. As I've already said, please hit the subscribe button, would really mean a lot to us, and also check out our written content on the website at Not The Old Firm, the link is in the description. Right, I'll, I'll leave you to the video now, all the boring stuff out the way with Louis Fiorini. Enjoy. Uh, so how did this uh, move to Holland come about then? Um, it's just, going on loans always something I've like, had in my head from being young. Like I've always wanted to do it and get out as early as possible and to show people what I can do as young as possible. I think that's a good thing to play men's football as young as you can. So, um, obviously, over the last few months, I've been looking at different options and different clubs, and this is the one that both City and myself thought was the best chance for me. I'm assuming you probably had options to stay in the UK, so why did you decide to go abroad? I know it's a trend now, really, with Premier League players especially. Yeah, so there was, like you said, offers uh, in the UK, like up in Scotland and stuff, but I just think in Holland the style of football will suit me and suit the way I play. Obviously, it's not as physical, but it's still got enough of the physical side to help me develop and also... There's a lot of emphasis on the technical side over here. I think a lot more than like dropping down divisions in England. So, yeah. No, I think because I, I think uh, young Frank Ross from Aberdeen up here um, has moved to the second tier with Go Ahead Eagles uh, last yeah. week. Yeah. Okay, announced on the same day as you, but it seems like he was talking about. I was seeing like Mason Mount, different players like that going over to their divisi and. They seem to come back and have a bit more grounding in their actual first team, so I'm sorry. Yeah. You as well. Uh, yeah, like you said, there's been loads of lads. Uh, Todd Cantwell's another one. He, he came over when he was, I think he was like 19, 20. So, obviously, to do it that step earlier, I think is a good thing. Like you said, when you go back, if you've played 25, 30 first team games, it's a big deal for managers. Like, they read into that a lot I think it's becoming more and more prevalent I think, I think you can spend a lot of time in academies especially down south but actually getting kicked about a wee bit um, yeah yeah like so I think like the step like obviously you've got to take the step into men's first team at some point so I just think you might as well try at your first opportunity so obviously if I come out here, it doesn't go so well. I go back to Manchester, I'm still only 19. Like, it's not the end of the world sort of thing. And like you said, it'll, it should toughen me up, get kicked around and stuff like that. So, I think it's a big chance to develop in the next 12 months. Obviously, you're one of the many Scottish youth players that are abroad now. How how are you, how are you Scottish? I think so. uh, it's, it's my grandmother. Which, so, it's my dad's mum. Unfortunately, I never met her. She passed away when my dad was young, so it is there. But um, she's not with us right now. Mm. So I'm assuming you've played under 19s, I'm pretty sure, with Billy Stark? Uh, yeah, so I've played... My Scotland debut was at under-16s. I played three games for the under-16s. I played for the under-17s, and then last season for the 19s. Because I know you've got Scott McTominay, there's a few of the boys, especially in the youth setup, who are like predominantly pretty much English, but with Scottish heritage, they've chosen to um, pick Scotland over England or whatever country they've been from. Is that just because there's a bit more of a chance that you can get in the Scotland first team in the future rather, rather than England? Or? Uh, yeah, there probably is all that, but it's also, you're still just as proud to play for Scotland because it represents my family also. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
it doesn't take anything away from it that I was born in England, grew up in England. It's still like just as much of a proud moment when I put the Scotland shirt on. Assuming like your bad side of the family must be quite happy when they see you pull on the navy blue. Yeah, exactly. It's all because that's what I mean. It's still a massive thing for my family when I play for Scotland and for myself. So I don't think growing up in England takes anything away from it. You're, you're seeing a lot more now, especially with Scotland. That I, there's a few even yesterday in the Scotland squad announcement. A couple of under 21s boys have been promoted into the first team. I, obviously, I'm assuming that you're looking at that pathway as a viable option for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With the squad announcement yes, yesterday, um, it does clearly show the pathway is there. Um, so that is your motivation, really. You look at that and you want to be in the next squad. And then when you're in the next squad, you want to be in the next. So. It's just keeps going on from there. And I know have you you've not played under twenty ones, haven't you? Have you not? Uh no. So nineteen last season. Um so obviously that is my aim. Hopefully if I can start well this season, have a good season, obviously in the men's football then. I don't see why I can't break into that squad. Because there's a good, there's a real mix. It's not like back a few years ago where it would pretty much just be predominantly SPFL players or teams in academies down south. You're seeing like George Johnson's in there, Fraser Hornby, they're playing like the Belgium. Yeah. So, and you'll hopefully be another name in the list coming up. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. Like you said, there's all different teams now, like, even across Europe. So hopefully I can add my name to that. And um, you're not getting much of a better football and education than in Manchester with Mr. Pep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not a bad. It, it's probably the best place to learn and grow from being young. So yeah, that's good. Were you in uh, first team training after lockdown for a wee bit? Cause I seen photos in our image bank looked like you were first team training. Yeah. So when they went back on June the first, um, five of us went back. So obviously I was lucky enough to train all the way up until the squad went to Lisbon to play the quarter final. So that was for about eight to ten weeks. So that was also, like without playing any games I felt like I learnt so much and could feel myself getting better and obviously because you have to be so much quicker and so much aware around players like that. I'm assuming the jump was pretty mental going from a youth team to playing me like David Silva and a couple yeah. It's massive, obviously, the difference at City from the youth team to the first team is massive. Obviously, compared to all the clubs, I think the jump would be a, a bit less going from the youth team to the first team, but at City, obviously, the jump's crazy. And I don't even think that's to do with the level of young player in there. I think it's just yeah. a quality player in the first team is oh, crazy. Yeah, exactly. There's, yeah, top players in City's youth out, but you've got like 20 world class players in City's first team so obviously there's when you're in and around that there's you've just got to be on it every single minute and I know you've you have been in and around them during your time as a professional but was that the first sustained period where you were with them every single day pretty much yeah that was the first time like since probably for the last 18 months of training with them every now and again sort of thing like when I've been needed but yeah, after lockdown, that was the first time I'd been like in the setup sort of thing. Mm, was there anybody? I know there's a good few players in there, but was there anyone in particular that were like, he's just unreal? Yeah, well, the obvious one, De Bruyne, but I have to say, him, like, he, he, like, it looks like he's going to lose the ball and he's in a bad situation and he just pulls a pass out of nowhere. Uh, it's some of the, it, I'm really sad to see David Silva away from the Premier League. He's been there since I was a wee guy, and yeah, he's yes, yeah, so you know. good. Uh, it's it's, it's a, just such a really good team. It's, I know it's it's perhaps not been the season they wanted, but I mean when you look at that squad, it's maybe a couple of defenders away from being another unstoppable force. Really, yeah, exactly. Well, the past two seasons before that, they had the showed that no one could get near him in the Premier League, so, yeah. It's, uh, they were unlucky last season, I think, as well. I think it was more to do with the fact that Liverpool just completely... Shrank. Yeah, they just ran away with it from early, and from, like, Christmas, there was no there was no stopping them. 
just with younger players, that's it. You've seen Eric Garcia and Phil Foden are now making strides into the first team regular plans. How is that an inspiration and a sort of guide for younger guys like yourself in the academy and the club that, well, if they can do it at a similar age, then I can do it? Uh, yeah, because obviously Phil's been at City since, since like as long as I can remember. So obviously in my team, we've all watched him grow up from being a little boy to getting his debut, getting his chances, and now he's a real member of that team. So that is your motivation and inspiration right in front of you. And the same for Eric when he came in, obviously a bit later, but we saw how he's progressed and got his chances, and now he's played a lot of games in the last season. It's a big one for Foden especially. I know he's a boyhood City fan and things like that, so for him to be pretty much playing most weeks now must just be really pleasing. Yeah, exactly. And yesterday he's just been called into the England first team squad. So, the yeah, he's done so well because obviously he's had times where he's not played as much as he's probably wanted to. And he saw people around him, obviously, his his age, like, like Sancho, who moved away and was playing straight away. And Phil had to be patient, but he's done it perfectly. And now I think with... David Silva leaving next season, he should have a great chance to play week in, week out. Mm-hmm. Yuri, you mentioned Sancho there. Are you ages with him? Did you play with him while he was still at City in the academy? Uh, I never played with him, but I trained with him a couple of times. He was two years older. So, um, but obviously, he was in Phil's age group. So, obviously, when they were both at like 17, they were both in the first team side. But one chose to go down one path, one chose to go down the other. So, but they both turned out to do really well. So, and they're both doing, they're both doing not too bad for themselves, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just in terms of the first team coach, you'll have had discussions with the elite uh, academy coaches at City, I presume. But have any of the first team guys spoke to you and gave you good advice? Uh, yeah, it's more in the session, to be fair. Um, obviously, just little things here and there, what, what they pick up on. Same for the players, they, they do help us out. Obviously, more if you're on like their team in training, for example, so it's like different things, but yeah, they're all helpful. And do you been to ask of any Man City player how intense are Guardiola's sessions? Oh, yeah, he's every day he's right at it, even after see, after the Real Madrid game when they got through to the quarterfinals, the day after he's still the same intensity, he's never like obviously he enjoys winning, but. The next day, straight back, like firm, intense. He's, yeah, he never stops. Yeah, because I know it was a few years ago, but that All or Nothing City documentary came out about the club, and you could see then it was a small insight. I'm assuming you've seen a lot more, but it just looked quite full on. Yeah, yeah, that is how he is all the time, really. Like off the pitch, like not so much, but the second he steps onto the, the grass, he's, he's what you see. He's, Proper for one. Is he chilled out off the park, like? Is he just kicking about? Sometimes? Yeah, he's off the park, he's fine. He's, he do not really speak about football much. He just tries to be calm. And then <laughs> when he gets on the pitch, it's a different story. Mm. Who is it you sort of kick about with, say? Um, a few lads who had made a debut now. So, um, Tommy Doyle, uh, Taylor Howard Bellis, and a lad called Ron McDonald. Okay. He sounds he sounds quite Scottish. Yeah, 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 it's got a Scottish name, but uh he doesn't actually qualify to play for Scotland, which is a shame for him. And there's there's a few now down south. I know you know a lot of the ones in the academy set, but there seems to be that seems to be more of an option because I think most people like in the UK have sort of some sort of dual nationality between they can play for England, Scotland. Yeah. It seems to be it's been, especially under Alex McLeish at Scotland, there was a real push to get some of the English guys who were perhaps not quite in yeah. the Scotland set Yeah, because I think some people are not even aware of being able to play for, say, like Wales, Ireland, Scotland. Obviously, it's a big opportunity for you, and obviously, it benefits both parties. So, countries like Ireland, Scotland, Wales gain players from down in England, it benefits the player and Obviously, the country. How long have you been at City? You've been there since you were a kid? Yeah, literally since 
I was probably about five or six. But around that time, I was looking at different clubs, different options. And then when it came to being nine, I made my decision. Did you, what team did you grow up supporting? Was it, were you boyhood like Foden or were you elsewhere? Yeah, boyhood. Because my dad, my dad's a, a massive City fan. So I had no choice really. Okay, so he'll be well accustomed to like main road and things like that. Yeah, 100%. Because that's because really, I know City have um, the usual tag of being tin pot fans and things like that, but I think what people don't really oh, yeah, it's like see back in the day when it was like you had obviously the big thing in the 90s with Oasis and the main road days and the championship and things like that. There was always 30, there was always a good following for City, yeah, exactly. That's what people don't understand and realize. Like, even when they were down in the second, third division, they were still pulling in like top division crowds, so. Yeah, it's a bit annoying when people say things like that. You have any good memories as a fan of the club? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, I've been lucky. I've I've saw all the good moments <laughs> and not so many of the bad ones. So yeah, I've got I got lucky. I was born in the right generation. Uh, it's good to be fair. You'll but you'll get clumped into the ones that will get called plastic fans and all sorts. Your dad can. Get yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in that group. Brilliant. Uh, I just finally then. Um, what are you hoping to achieve this season with Nat Breda? Um, I just want to get as much first team football as I can and experience. Obviously, it's a long season, thirty-eight league games, and obviously, if I can get twenty, twenty-five, then I'll be happy. But obviously, I want to play every game in a little second, just get my chance as soon as possible because I've not been here for long. I've had four training sessions, and then we're straight into the first league game on Saturday. So I think it might take a few weeks to maybe getting a team and try and nail down a starting spot. But I just want to help the team as much as I can, score goals and hopefully we can get promoted as well. That's quite a quick start for you because when I was speaking to the guy for Go Ahead Eagles, he said they're only back a couple of weeks. So I can't assume that you aren't too far off that either. Uh, obviously, I I don't know when they went back, but obviously I only came last week. So then they had the last friendly on Saturday. So and then we're straight into the competition. So I've not actually played a proper game since before lockdown so I think obviously like I said the first few weeks will just be getting up like to match speed and then hopefully from there I can have a good season.